Hello you lovely lot and welcome back to another video. My name is Katie and today we're gonna unbox Scrollbox and have a little play with the goodies inside. If you didn't know, Scrollbox is a monthly art subscription box and we get goodies every month. One of which is a featured artist print and this month's artist is Ericus Chesonis. I think that's how you say it. And I like that print, I like the colours and I like... I just like it. As I'm sure you'll see on screen, it is a paint marker kind of box this month. And scrolling through the magazines, it kind of confirms that. We also have winners from previous boxes, so well done you guys. It's quite nice to see a lot of names I recognise on there too, so well done. But let's talk about the goodies. So we have six markers by Marabou and it is the Yono range. I believe that Yono means you only need one. The six colours we have are pastel lilac, rose pink, pastel blue, mistletoe, grey and white. We also have a Pentel bullet point marker N850 in black and it says it's low odour, but it's a bit of a stinky one. It smells like marker pens from the late 80s to early 90s, just for reference there. And our surface is the custom Scrollerbox Multimedia Sketchpad. It's 160 GSM, it's smooth white paper, and it's half of an A5, but it's not an A6. It's, it's the other half you get from it, you know what I mean. And our scroll challenge this month is things with wings. Well, obviously this one is screaming for a dragon. So whilst I'm drawing dragons in the background, let's have a little chat about these markers. So yeah, they're a bit weird. They're not quite like a Posca. I want to say that I mean it in the sense that the ink's kind of different in there. I noticed that it had a very, very matte finish to it, almost like a chalkboard liner. And I noticed as well when the paint was dry from these pens, if I ran my finger across from it, it did actually leave quite a impression there, I guess for want of better words. You could actually feel where you'd put the ink compared to areas of the paper where that ink wasn't. Because these had such a matte finish once they dried, and I really would let these dry out for a good while before going over them again. But I also noticed as well, on that dried layer, it became very thirsty and it was a little bit difficult to go over areas with more colours, for example. Which is fine, once I kind of figured that out, then that kind of helped me change my approach for the next picture I did. Yes, we're doing two pictures on this video. I liked how relatively flat everything was. I didn't feel the need to go over it in a second coat, but again, referring to that matte finish and how it interacted with another layer on top, I'm not sure that really would have been a very good idea, at least for larger surface areas. I loved the colour selection we had though, it's quite nice to have a good selection of pastel colours and in a sense it's actually making me want to do more cute and kawaii type art so maybe if I do a beyond the box I might take that little route there so let me know down below if you want to see my attempt at kawaii. <laughs> Another thing I noticed as well about the interaction of pens was the Pentel bullet point marker. It's an alcohol based pen so it's going to dry very quickly anyway and I did notice that when I went over areas where the paint markers had been just because the surface was so thirsty afterwards I don't think it worked great with that pen. However it was great to block out colours straight onto the paper and work over the top with those paint markers so that's perhaps something to bear in mind if you've not used these before. At a push they were okay to perhaps just refine areas and perhaps add little bits of detail however I did have to keep cleaning the nib on that black marker just to make sure that it didn't become contaminated and it didn't also clog up the fibre tip there as well so just take, take note of that. What I really did like was the format of the paper though. And don't get me wrong, I don't mind a good old A5 sketchbook, but when we get an unusual shaped format of paper, whether it's a square or a elongated oblong, 
it's kind of nice. It's a nice way to perhaps rethink about how you do your designs there. And speaking of designs, we're, we're on the better one now. So if you're still here, well done for hanging on in there. For this thing with wings, I thought I would draw a harpy, or at least my interpretation of a harpy. I began by blocking out the background using that black marker. I thought, let's just get that down first, and then I'm minimising the risk of damaging that nib. And also, that was a great way to create the negative space where our harpy is going to be. I thought the grey pen would be great to add some of the tonal details on the face, and I thought I would give our harpy that mistletoe green colour for her hair. And because we're getting close to spooky season right now as well, I thought I'd give her a pretty horrific looking expression, because why not? It's kind of interesting really, I, I don't really think I've drawn a harpy on this channel before and maybe that might be something I have to explore a little later down the line. But the only other places where I can think of where I've perhaps seen it on a little bit more of a mainstream thing is The Last Unicorn, which was the most horrific looking harpy ever. It was quite terrifying when I saw it for the first time. And then I'm not sure if many of you guys have watched it, but Studio Ghibli did a series, and I think it might have been on Amazon, and it was Ronya, the robber's daughter, I think, and there were some harpies in that as well. And hey, maybe I've missed a few others off other popular culture things, I don't know. But yeah, I hadn't really got much to go off. I just knew they were these females with wings instead of arms and a bird-like body. And um, you, you didn't really want to encounter them, so there was no way I was going to be doing a fluffy, cute one. Although saying that though, that might be interesting for Beyond the Box. Hmm... I didn't want to give her pure white wings, that would have just been too easy, so I incorporated the greys, I added a touch of blue in there, and also the addition of that mistletoe green, just keeping in theme with her hair colour there. Again, this was where I found that the, the paint markers didn't interact amazingly on top of each other, and again, I think that's mainly down to how matte it dries. Which, again, leads me to suspect that I wonder if these are more like your chalkboard markers rather than your traditional ones, or if they are to be used in, I don't know, alongside them, perhaps. I also imagine that these would work phenomenally on some black Bristol board paper, or some regular Bristol board, too. I thought it was time to add some details around her face, so her facial features have been added in there, and, of course, adding the hair details. And you'll see here... Perhaps a little bit more on what I'm on about with the pen itself just struggling to make any crisp marks where the hair was. And that's okay, I mean, she is not meant to be this prim and proper with immaculate hair like I normally draw. It kind of added to the effect. However, it just did get a little bit frustrating at times when I wanted to make some lines and it just wouldn't quite do what I wanted it to. I really had to work in without actually risking damaging the nib. So just bear that in mind if you're adding those black details on top. And yes, I definitely waited for everything to be thoroughly dried. So yeah, there's a couple of issues with how the pens interact, but I actually don't think this is a bad box on the whole. I think there's a bit of a learning curve there. I think they work more effectively when they are used in block colours rather than layering up and I think the print that we received this month kind of kind of gave some clues as to perhaps the best way to use them. Of course you use them however you like and experiment as you would but there are going to be certain effects that you can't quite achieve with these and that's fine. I'm actually quite excited to have Again, such matte colours. I think they can be so useful for a number of projects. I'm actually wanting to start playing with polymer clay at the moment, and I think perhaps adding a few details using at least the ink out of these pens might be useful there. I think for covering large areas, again, if you just keep into the same directions and don't overwork it on the paper, you can get some beautifully flat colours put down there and create some really nice, simple images. If you're going to work colours on top, again, just be mindful that that matte surface of your layer beneath is probably going to draw the moisture out of your pen nibs there, so just be prepared to either work quickly or a little bit more patiently. 
Although saying that though, this is kind of highlighted in the Scrawler magazine as well. So I mean, it's it, there's not really any surprises there, I guess. But I still tried to push it, you know, just in case. But all in all, like I mentioned earlier, I really enjoyed this box. It was kind of nice and refreshing. I know we've already had some paint markers this year, but again, these are just a little bit different than a bunch of Posca pens thrown in. The last month where we had these kinds of markers, they were fluorescents, and these ones are pastels and they're matte. So I like the fact that we're having interesting paint markers in there rather than the safe option every time. But yeah, I enjoyed this box and I enjoyed creating with it too. As always, let me know what you guys think down below. I've dropped quite a few videos recently, so I'll pop one or two of them on screen to make sure you're all caught up. Oh, and I might have a Halloween special coming too. In the meantime, I will see you lovely lot then. Bye!